Hello everyone, this is Matt with the Cardboard Stacker, and welcome to how to play Rocket Ranchers, Herding Cats in Space. It's a grid drafting set collection card game about ranching alien creatures on a distant planet, all while dealing space cats. This game was designed by David Bach with illustrations by Cam Kendall. This game is suitable for up to 6 players, ages 8 and up, and plays in around 40 minutes. This is a learn in a turn video, where you learn as the game plays in a turn or two or as many needed. We divided this video into chapters. If you want to view a specific rule from the game, you can find the list of rules in the description below. Have a question or something nice to say? Leave a comment! And it would be a wonderful and tremendous help if you can give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks! Your colony has been selected to collect space animals from the wilderness of an alien planet for your ranch. However, you'll need to be careful of any nearby space cats, as they'll cling to any animal you try to beam up. The more of a type of animal that you collect, the more money you'll make. Space cats, on the other hand, will either lose or gain you money depending on how many you happen to catch. The player with the most money wins. Will you create a profitable ranch, or will you lose money trying to herd cats in space? Let's do the setup. First, each player chooses a dogship deck of their preferred color. For this playthrough, let's take the yellow dogship deck of 5 cards. Then, depending on the number of players in your game, shuffle the number of animal cards and space cats according to the player count. For this 4 player game, we will need all the cards from Desert, Grassland, Jungle, Tundra, and 12 space cats. Combine and shuffle to create the Wilderness deck. Place this off-center where everyone can reach. Next, deal each player one card from the Wilderness deck face down. This will be the first corral to collect animals. When a face down card is placed into your corral, you may not look at it. Keep room for extra corral spaces. Also, keep a separate area named the Floof space to keep space cats in, and an additional area for discarded dogship cards. Now deal out animal cards face up from the Wilderness deck, creating a 4x4 grid of 16 cards. Place both standard scoring and space cat scoring cards where all players can see. If you wish, you can play with corporate assignments, the advanced rules of the game. Certain types of animals will have different scoring conditions in the advanced game. Randomly select three assignment cards and splay them out on the playing area so all players can view them. Arrange them by species number, as this will be the order which they will score. We'll learn more about corporate assignments during scoring. That's it! Time to set your tractor beams online! Let's begin the game, and we'll be the first player. Take the Space Cat Protection Agency badge to let all the players know that you are the first player in the game. Here's the turn structure. On a player's turn, they will either play one dogship card to beam up an animal card into their corral, or reboot to regain their used cards. Then, they will refill any empty spaces on the grid with new animal cards from the Wilderness deck. Turns proceed clockwise. So let's view the grid. Let's play a dogship beam narrow card. The shape of each beam determines the area of cards you will pick up and place into your corral. It can be rotated, but all squares in the beam's shape must be within the 4x4 grid. Let's choose these animals here. Bring these cards in front of you and discard your dogship card. Now it's time to put these animals into your corrals. You do start with a free corral. Only one type of species can be placed in any one corral, and you can only have one type of species among corrals you have. You have two chicken cards, so place these into the empty corral. You don't have any more corrals to place the rest of the cards, so now you have to make one into a corral. Take the bako and flip it. Then you can add it to your corral row. Now you can place the wool bee into the new corral. You have to make sure to place any and all animals into corrals, or flip them down to make corrals. Once you're done, you'll need to repopulate the wilderness grid before you pass the turn to the next player. Draw cards from the wilderness deck and refill open spaces from left to right, top to down. Once all spaces are filled up, the player to the left takes their turn. Make sure to not shift any cards when refilling. It's now the red player's turn. They play a beam, standard dogship card, and collect two animal cards. One will go into their first corral, the other is flipped and turned into a new corral. Then, they repopulate the grid. 
Next, we have the purple player. They play a four line beam card and collect their animals. They collect four different animal cards. One will go into their corral, two become new corrals, and the last one goes on a corral. Then they repopulate the grid. The blue player is next. They choose the precise beam and collect one animal card and places it into their corral. Then they repopulate the grid again. It's your turn again! Now you play the beam standard card. Turn it this way and collect these animals. And what's this? You got one free space cat! Let's see how you got that again. When you collect cards with your beam, any space cats that are orthogonally adjacent that means any that are next to its side and not diagonally to the beam shapes are also collected. When you do collect animals and space cats that cling, other space cats don't cling to other space cats. Now place your animals into the corrals. The chicken goes with the others. The elephant doesn't have an empty corral to go in, so we will flip it to make a new corral. Space cats don't go into the corral. Instead, they are placed in the floof space we reserved earlier. And finally, we still need to repopulate the grid. The red player is first going to play a special program card, which can be played before or after playing a beam card. The shepherd special program card can swap any two animals in the same biome, which is indicated by the color of the cards. Space cats cannot be swapped. Place the special program card into the discard pile after use. Now the red player continues their turn and plays a beam intense card, taking four cards. They have an existing species already in their corral and places the cards there. The last card flips and becomes a new corral. Then they repopulate the grid. The purple player uses two beam cards and takes two animal cards along with two space cats. Both animal cards already have corrals, so are placed thusly. The two space cats go into their floof space. And for their final act on their turn, they use the shepherd card to swap these animals. The blue player uses the 4 box beam card and collects 4 animals including a space cat in the beam. The space cat collected does not cause the adjacent space cat to be collected. Space cats only cling on other animals. One of the animals are placed into the corrals, two get flipped, and one is placed in a new corral. The grid is repopulated. Just a note, you can play your shepherd card after refilling the grid. Your turn! and you use Beam Precise to take another chicken. A space cat clings onto your chicken. You place your chicken into its corral with the others. The space cat goes into your floof space. You repopulate the grid. The red player uses Beam Narrow, collects four animal cards and takes a space cat along. Then they repopulate. The purple player is going to reboot. Any player can reboot, skipping their turn to retrieve all their dog ship cards back into their hand. A player can only do this if there are at least two beam cards in their discard pile. So, special program cards don't count. The blue player does the same and retrieves their dogship cards too. It's your turn again! You play the Beam Intense card and collect four animal cards. You don't collect this space cat since it's positioned diagonally from your collected animals. You place your animals and you repopulate. When all your beam cards are in your discard pile at the end of your turn, you get to automatically reboot and retrieve all your cards immediately, so you don't need to spend your next turn rebooting. Everyone takes their turns and the game goes on like this until the end game triggers. The game continues until the wilderness deck is empty at the end of the player's turn. At this point, the turns continue in order with the player to the right of the badge holder having the final turn. There may be empty spaces on the wilderness grid and beams that collect on empty spaces don't receive any cards and still have to follow the collecting rules. Once the final player finishes their turn, all players score up. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. It would really help us grow the channel. Each player calculates their own corral and number of space cats at the end. Let's take a look at how well you did. The scoring charts can be seen below, so you can follow along. Let's do your first corral. You have 9 chickens. If you have between 9 and 11 cards of the same species, you will score 3 points for each card. So, 9 times 3 equals 27 points. Between 3 and 5 cards in a corral, you'll gain 1 point for each card. You have 3 Ella plants, so you get 3 points for those. And you have 4 Woolbees, so 4 from those. Unfortunately, you don't score any points if you only have 1 to 2 cards of a species, so both your Drome and Capiwata score for 0. Between 6 and 8 cards, you'll score 2 points per card. You have 6 plushie! 
so you receive 12 points. For each corral you have empty, you subtract 6 points. Finally, Space Cats have a different way they score. Looking at the scoring card, 6 cards will give you 6 points. That comes out to 1 point for each Space Cat. Now let's add them together, and your total is... 40 points! Let's compare this with the other players. Red has 40 points, Purple has 39 points, and Blue has 32 points. Since both you and Red are tied for the most points, the tiebreaker comes down to who has more Space Cats. And that's you. So you win! If you're playing with the advanced rules, score on each corporate assignment one at a time in ascending order. For these particular animals, you only score them once on their corporate assignment. You do score the rest of your corral as normal. The Woolby will score first. Let's say you have second most. Then you'll score two points for each card. You don't have any Kelk, so you will get penalized by subtracting five points from your total. In the case of ties for the most and otherwise, all players score for the full amount. Finally, for chickens, it says you must discard three chickens per space cat in your floof pile, and you have six cats. While it means that you must discard 18 chicken cards, you effectively discarded them all. And since you don't have any more chickens, you don't score any points, which creates an empty corral and a penalty of negative six points. Your total in the advanced game will be 12 points. This concludes this Learn and Turn video for Rocket Ranchers. For more information about this game, please visit Binksadinks.com. The Cardboard Stacker likes to give special thanks to Binksadinks for making this video possible. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. I'm Matt with the Cardboard Stacker, and I'm here to remind you to keep on stacking games.